Hello and welcome to today's interview, which is all around the TEDx Only Top Women event that took place in December 2019. Remember those days when you could meet 100 people in a room? And today I've got the great pleasure of being joined by Martin Sharp. Now, if you remember the TEDx Only Top Women event, um, hmm, interesting, Martin doesn't look like a woman, does he? <laughs> Unless you've been to see the world's greatest show on your TV recently. Uh, so Martin Sharp, who are you? What do you do? And why did you want to have a TEDx talk? Thank you, Cheryl. So yeah, I'm Martin Sharp, an international coach, speaker, mentor, and change agent. And I've been helping businesses uh, do massive transformations for the last 20 odd years and got some amazing results off the back of it. Now, one of the things I found when I've been going through and doing these kind of great uh, changes is not a lot of people actually understand what it is that I do. Uh, not only that, but because you, it's couched in a lot of corporate terms, there's a lot of uh, in, 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 inside a lingo, it means that it's very hard for people to kind of break into that kind of barrier and to actually understand where it is that they need to go, what it is that they need to do to be able to change and make those things happen. So for me, doing something like a TEDx talk is just a, such a liberating experience because you don't have to worry about couching it in, in corporate terms. You don't have to worry about making it that it's specific to that, that organization or specific to that industry type. All of a sudden you can make this accessible to everybody and really enjoy the experience of being able to change lots of different people's lives. And for me, that's kind of been one of the greatest elements of being invited to speak at the TEDx Only Top Women, uh, along with the fact that, yeah, I brought the, the, the only male voice to the, to the room, really, with the exception of the compare. Um, and that, that, again, was such a, a proud and privileged moment to be able to stand on stage with so many amazing transformational women that have absolutely made difference in so many people's lives. And I felt quite humbled, actually, to be the only man there to, to kind of hold up the, the male flag to, to what was a, an absolutely fantastic event. Yeah. I mean, it was interesting because, you know, I set the event up and I specifically went for the license for a women only event because uh, Martin and I, you know, we already knew each other. We'd met, um, you know, through speaking and then Martin had joined our Find Your Why Foundation uh, event as a wise man. In fact, he was the first wise man. And we were like, oh, my gosh, we better find something to help him with. <laughs> so he'd always been really, really supportive of, of me personally, which I want to say thank you very much for. So it was really nice to be able to, you know, um, receive reciprocate uh, you know the fact that you've really been there uh, you know holding for, for us a lot of times uh, and what, what people probably don't know is that Martin was doing all the AV right up until the second that he was on stage and then when he came off he was doing all the AV again with the with the help of his assistant so it was really a pleasure uh, but the reason why I've done the women was because I wanted women to have a platform because you know there's a bit of a thing out there which is oh there's so many men speakers you know almost like a blaming of the men and it was like well you know you want to stop bitching and start pitching because really it's only the women that are responsible for getting on stages so you know I create a stage but at the same time it didn't I didn't want it to just be a women only event um, and obviously Martin was part of the community anyway so that was it was a pleasure to be able to offer you the opportunity um, but also when we first met Martin I remember the first time we ever met, I said, oh, what do you do? And you, you, you explained what you did. And I know you were speaking English. <laughs> I could recognize the words. But I think at the end of it, I just went, it sounds really interesting, but I've got no idea what you said. Mm -hmm. uh, and on many occasions, we share, share a car trip, you know, from uh, Yorkshire down to London and, and vice versa. And, and I got to know you a lot more. And I just said, you know, you've got such a wealth of experience. But I want you to be able to, to say it in a way that people understand, you know, your amazingness. So this was a really great opportunity to work together. So yeah. your title of your TEDx talk. We, we had some conversations around that, didn't we? But in the end, what did you decide on? The power of and. Yes, the power of and. So tell, tell, tell the, the listeners, the viewers, all about the reason why you chose this subject. So for me, uh, combining things together is really where the magic happens because we're, we're living in a world now where we've got all these building blocks of technology, we've got all these building blocks of life, we've got all these kind of different things that people have invented and created and, and want to do. We've also living these lives where we've never had so many opportunities to be able to do things. And what kind of happens is people either get overwhelmed because they see far too much of it or, or they get into this kind of position where they have to choose it's either one thing or another. 
uh, and they kind of get into their own way because then they, they kind of get stuck in this cycle of, of not actually moving themselves forward. And the reality is that the magic is finding how you combine these things together. And actually that, that's where you make these things happen. How can you have a work and life? How can you have, you know, your, your steak and steak and chips, whatever it was. <laughs> There's lots of different kind of combinations that you can have out there. Um, and, and just learning out which ones that you want and how you can make them work. And, and that's across the board. It doesn't matter whether you're doing this for your own personal life, for your family, for, for your working relationship. You, you've got to kind of work out where you can combine these things together. Um, at the moment, as, as you know, I'm going through a very much a, a massive transformation in my own personal life in the fact that the, the first five years of running my own seven-figure business um, – kind of really took its toll on me. I threw myself heart and soul into doing that business, really single-minded and focused in making it as, as good as I can. And, and we've got some fantastic results off the back of it. You know, I've done $16 billion asset transfers for giant pharmaceutical firms. I've helped smaller organizations being able to get themselves off the ground and really be able to understand what they, they want to do. So uh, for one organization, they went from a standing start of nothing to, to spaces like 15 million turnover in the space of three years. Years. So being able to get that done has been great, but it really did take its toll on me. And I, I went from a very active, enjoying canoeing and surfing and cycling, weighing in at about 90 kilos, 88 kilos-ish, um, to, to what was quite an obese person. I was on the morbidly obese scale at 154 kilos. Uh, I was finding myself having lots of trouble. So I really kind of doubled down this last uh, couple of years to really make a change in that. And that's trying to learn again while doing that, still uh, being able to run the business, still being able to learn and spend time with family and spend time with friends, etc. All those things that are really high on my agenda, my personal values. So being able to apply the, the power of the and to actually make all those things work together really makes my life um, fulfilled. I feel valued. I feel like I am living the life that I want to be living. And I don't want other people to be able to have this same experience. And I think from the feedback I've had from people I've actually listened to the TED Talk uh, and have kind of come to me afterwards and said how much actually they've never thought of it in those kind of terms. They've never really looked for those combinational moments. They kind of realised they were using lots of negative language in their own lives where they were, they were forcing themselves into this very black and white position uh, where, you know, if things right or wrong, good or evil... And, and, and the reality is life is never that simple. You know, life is balanced. There's always got to be one thing and another to, to make things work. You've got to have day to have night. Um, and, and that for me, being able to bring that and present it in a way that people could understand and really take something away from it, re regardless of what background they were, whether they, this was they're taking away something personally for their own lives, whether they're taking it away for, for some business reason, whether they're just taking it away as a, a thought experiment. I just loved that opportunity to be able to touch those lines. It was great. Yeah, it was. And, and also to be able to, I remember, you know, you, you, you sent through the first submission and then of course, you know, I'm a speaker coach, so I got a bit of feedback, of course. And then it was like, I want to see some humour. And oh my gosh, did you bring the humour to this? It was brilliant. And I remember seeing, um, you know, the audience just sitting there like smiling away, which was fabulous. Because again, you know, it's this kind of like, you know, because you're corporate, you know, you can't be anything other than serious, you know. And it's like, no, I can be corporate and serious and I can have a, have a bit of fun as well. So there was a little tagline, wasn't there, which was to, um, what, <laughs> you did a little dance with it as well, which was fabulous. <laughs> The butt and replace it with the and. Yeah, drop the butt and replace it with the and. And if we weren't in such a small space, we'd probably be able to do the dance right now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think people should wait and go and watch the TEDx video, you see, and you can see Matt in sharp <laughs> dropping his butt <laughs> and replacing it with the and. <laughs> And I think a lot of that came because uh, we, we had a really good conversation about what those talks were going to be. And we're trying to work out how can we bring more energy into the room? Because one thing that a lot of TED Talks have when you go and watch them is become very serious and dour. And you, you're in this position where actually by the end of it, you, you might have changed your thought process, but actually you might feel like you want to slit your wrists or something. And I think when we were talking about it, it was really a case of I didn't want my my talk to be anything like that. Yes, I want it to be transformational. I want people to, you know, really think about what they're doing. But I wanted it to be from a position where they feel happy and empowered. And 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 that's just a great feeling when you're able to move an audience to be able to do that when they're all stood in front and just having a giggle about what was going on there. And I do like bringing those moments in, even in corporate life, um, where you get that sort of double take. It's like, have you really said that? Um, and it, it does. It makes uh, such a big difference because people remember it. 
And, and, and that's the thing. If, if you want to be transformational, if you want to make a difference in people's lives, if you want to make a difference in organisations, etc., it has to be something that's implementable and re rememberable. If you can't do those two things, then you're a bit stuck. Yeah, exactly. Just sort of fade into the background. And so in terms of, I mean, obviously you were there to help with the setup the night before, which we're very grateful for. Um, you know, we were trying to get a, a, a 12 foot high heeled sh <laughs> glitter shoe through a door that wasn't expecting to receive a 12 foot high foot glitter shoe. So there were, there were a few challenges there. And at the same time, <laughs> we still overcame them. So can you remember walking in the day after? Because obviously the, the setup was kind of like, we, you know, everyone was busy. And then mm. we sort of all calmed down. When, we, when you walked in, in the day of the TEDx, you know, just talk me through the day of, you know, obviously you were helping and supporting others with the mics, etc. But like in the lead up to your talk, if you can just talk through the day and how you felt, that would be great. Okay. So, so for me, I think I had a slightly different experience to the rest of the speakers. Uh, I know when I was talking to the speakers and a, a lot of what I was doing, helping on the, the AV side of it, which I've done for many different organisations. And uh, I kind of enjoy being a bit backstage and getting uh, in, involved where I can. Um, people come up to you and they're very nervous. It's like, oh my God, it's my turn. I'm going to be on stage in a moment. And I don't know if I can do this. And oh God, what if I get it wrong? And you, you just, you, you spend the time just calming them really and then helping them through that kind of process to say you know you're gonna be fine no one knows what you're gonna say so whatever you say is the right thing at the end of the day you know just just have faith in yourself that you will get to get there and I think everybody who stood on stage afterwards did and they, they did sterlingly well and uh, and I think again, most of the speakers came off stage and again said a, a quiet thank you to me for those calming words and that kind of small small hand in, in what was a, a larger outfit getting that TEDx talk done um so for me I, because I'm so occupied doing all the other bits and pieces, I didn't have time to become nervous. Uh, from the moment I walked back in that door, it was all about um, what did we have to finish off? Because, yeah, and again, fantastic help from all the women that were involved on in the TEDx and their partners in many cases who had come in the night before. I've never, ever seen an event set up so quickly or torn down so quickly and, and tidied away. Absolutely beautiful. Everyone will work there really hard made it look amazing um but for me it was kind of for the first thing in the morning i knew there was problems we already knew certain things weren't set up certain things didn't work we already knew that we were behind on a couple of bits and pieces because we'd forgot to bring bits of equipment or whatever reason um so straight away it was it, it was going through get those bits working making sure we've checked all the equipment make sure the camera people that weren't there the night before were hooked up make sure they were able to get their feeds for the microphones etc make sure the lighting was okay for them all the measurements had been taken so straight away you're, you're into that kind of process then everyone's kind of being ushered out of the room and you're kind of helping that that happening you're going through doing things like mic checks sound checks uh, you're making sure people are coming on stage at the right time, making sure you've got your agendas in the right place so you know who's coming on at what time. So it really is. There's a, it's a hive of activity in that kind of corner where you are dealing with the AV and, and kind of making sure that uh, I don't give you as the organiser any kind of problems. So that, that for me was where, where I was and what was keeping my attention focused. So it really was until probably the speaker before I went on stage that actually I, I was fine. I was, I was perfectly okay. And then that that point where I suddenly realised, actually, uh, I'm... I'm, I'm on next. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of then a case of, well, hang on. Well, what am I saying? What am I doing? Am I ready? Um, and you kind of get that gulp in the throat, that little dryness, that kind of feeling of butterflies and things. And I, from the many, many, many times that I've stood up, not in front of just like hundreds of people on stage, but also in, stood in front of board members, in, stood in front of team members, etc., you always get those butterflies and it's kind of that feeling of, you know, Oh, I hope it goes down. Okay. I hope I say the right thing. I hope I don't irritate anybody. Um, but that, that's that feeling showing that you care. You, know, you, you want to do a good job. So th that's a good feeling to have. And that's certainly how I felt on the day. And yeah, I did screw up, you know, <laughs> at one point I was trying to highlight a point that everyone's got a phone and what did I forget to bring to the stage? My phone. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I'm getting everyone to raise the phone in the air, upset for me. Um, so, you know, these things happen, but, you know, the show must go on. So what do you do about it? Just make a joke about it, you know, raise your phone. That's mine. I left it on my desk. Everyone else can laugh about it. Uh, and, you know, it, it didn't matter because the, the talk still worked, it still flowed, and everyone still enjoyed it, and they took away something from it. 
Um, afterwards, I think, yeah, I definitely had that sigh of relief. I think we went straight into a break at that point and I got uh, lots of congratulation messages from people, including my, my parents who were in the audience who were absolutely proud as punch. Uh, and my dear wife who uh, who thoroughly loved it i think afterwards she says actually i now understand why you do what you do uh, yeah. which considering she's been on this journey for me for decades it's kind of <laughs> it felt a bit of oh finally <laughs> well, but... yeah it was good it was really really good a really a really great family atmosphere and you're right you know a lot of the speakers were wise women and obviously we had the wise men there as well. You're right. We had a male um, gentleman, a male gentleman. <laughs> like, what's that mean? <laughs> we had a male called Paul Doherty who was doing the comparing, which was great. So that was a really nice mixture of energies as well. And it's a little bit like, you know, when people said to me, well, it was a women only event, but you had a woman. I could turn around and say, and, I, and you had a woman and you had a man. It's like, yes. And the reason why I had a man actually I had two men in the room was because of the energy balance you're right you know so like it, it was quite funny that you know oh but you had a man at a women's event and it was like no and I had two men at the women's event that was what it was one of them spoke and one of them did the compare because I like to give back to people who were involved in me of course so you stood on the red circle mm -hmm. and then of course after that event we pretty much went into Christmas mm -hmm. um you know this was like the second week of December and then we had to wait to find out whether or not the talk's been approved. And of course, Christmas was in the way, so that was okay. And then sort of, we got into January the 2nd or 3rd, I think, and they started to approve some of the videos. What was that feeling before you knew that TEDx had approved your talk? Because, um, you know, there's, uh, you know you'd, you'd achieved whatever, whatever, whatever anybody said, you'd done a TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. However, had you done a TEDx approved talk, of course, was like the next phase. What was that period of time like for you? Um, I don't think, I don't, I wasn't nervous. I wasn't really worried. Um, and I kind of had this, it, it's exactly like you say, I was very sanguine about it. I, we'd done the talk. It changed a hundred people's lives inside that room. Um, and that was good. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. And especially when you consider a lot of the other talks and venues that you do things at, um, especially if it's kind of anything where it's a multi-speaker event or, or even, in fact, inside boardrooms and things, the, the feeling and atmosphere as you can have is quite adversarial, whereas the, the feeling and atmosphere we had inside the, the TEDx talk was very communal. Uh, it was very warm, welcoming. Everyone was there for a positive reason. There was lots of nice conversations going on. Uh, there was none of the, the little snidiness and bitchiness that you tend to get in lots of other different venues and things. So I kind of came out of doing TEDx with a very much a high anyway. I felt very calm, very relaxed, very happy that of what we'd done. Um, so coming through to, to get the, the videos approved, um, I wasn't nervous or upset or anything. And I was kind of in this position where I was thinking, what will be, will be. Now, don't get me wrong. That's not saying I didn't want to have an, a, an official TEDx stance kind of talk up there, which is, is definitely what I wanted. And it's definitely had uh, great effects uh, because I've got all that. And I'm going to talk about that a bit later. But uh, I didn't feel like I, I needed it. It didn't feel like you know that, that was the be all and end all. Actually, what we'd accomplished on that day for me just felt fantastic. Yeah, it's good. Well, what I really love is that the fact that your talk really kind of set, set your life since then as well, because as you'd said, you know, corporate, everything was corporate, working long hours, you know, you'd pile on the weight, the stress, you know, not moving, whatever it was that, that had brought you to that place. Um, but of course, you know, you can't do all that, you know, and look after your health, can you? If you're growing a business, you can't look after your health surely um and you took your own words of advice and you changed it into the you can run a successful business and you can look after your your health because um, what's the personal journey that you've had i know you mentioned it a little bit earlier on but you've gone from how many how many pounds to to whatever i mean do you do you, do you do you look at the pounds or do you just look at the fact that you feel and look much healthier than you did before so yeah, I mean, weight is definitely one of the measures that I've been looking at, but it's part of a whole host of different things. One of the things I find working with other businesses and working on major transformations is, is a lot of it's about the data. So always scrolls behind every single major piece of work I've ever done. I've got a spreadsheet somewhere full of numbers, which kind of shows the as is and to be kind of journey that anything's going to be going on, on all of the moving parts that's in between them, whether that's, you know, people, process, technology, whether that's integration points, whether that's information, et cetera. And, and, and going in your own personal journey is the same kind of thing as well. You need to be collecting data uh, so you can see objectively what's going on because it can be a bit like 
boiling a frog really you're not too sure if you're in the warm water that uh, eventually you will cook it although i've never actually tried to boil a frog I'll, uh, i just assume the analogy is correct um so yeah that's uh, alongside doing all those kinds of things that's the bits that i've been doing now is to really understand and hone uh, how i make it work in a busy life yeah i i, I can tell there's another ted talk coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely and it's interesting for what you just said there martin because you're right you know there's so many different things to look at you know, it's about getting a professional to help you because, you know, you try to do a lot of this on your own. And, and, and when you were talking, I was thinking, wow, you know, there's a lot more that even I didn't know that you've been through, if you like. And at the same time, I was like, wow, that sounds a little bit like the TEDx talk. Because, you know, people like, you're right, you know, ever since we've, we've had the Only Talk Women, you know, and, and the reality of it was, I tried to get as many talks in one day as possible. Now, that's a big ask for 100 people to sit there and listen to 20 talks, you know, one after each other, you know, little bits of break. You know, we had a, we had a singer, Sam, you know, to, to be able to, you know, break it up a little bit. But actually, at the end of it, you know, what the, what, the, what the crowd said, what the audience said was, you know, even though there was a lot of talks on this day, you know, we weren't ever bored. I mean, one lady said to me I didn't sleep very well last night I was worried I was going to fall asleep you know and all this lot and, and yet in the background you know like like you described the night before there was lots of work to do you know so like in the lead up to it people think that they can just walk up and do a TED talk they think that they have to just talk they can just talk about themselves and their, and their story is going to be good enough well yeah you can bring in elements of your story but people aren't interested in the story so you know there was the first of all you've got to find out what you want to talk about then you've got to submit you know to somebody who knows what they're talking about and um, you know and I had examples of people who said that they'd been given feedback by other people before they came to me well I don't know who those people were because those talks were not acceptable they definitely weren't TEDx standard and they definitely weren't my standard so they weren't going to go through without some support so you know so I supported helped guided you know to, to help people to get this the best version because mm. you know sometimes you just get one shot at being a TEDx talk do you know what I mean a TEDx you know speaker and so I didn't want people to go oh you know I look at my talk now and it was okay and I'm not settling for okay either then there's all the organization, you know, we had props, as I said, with the shoes, you know, and all the rest of it. The, you know, there's organizing the AV, there's the, you know, the where you're going to have it, how are people going to get there, who's going to come, all of these things. And it is like, you know, well, you could easily say, well, do you know what, I wanted to do a TEDx talk, but... Um, and yet it was the and that brought it all together, you know, the collaboration, you know, with people like yourselves, you know, but backwards and forwards, both, both ways, if you like, all the other speakers, all the audience, all, you know, and TEDx, you know, like I watched so many TEDx videos to be able to create this uh, system that I hoped would be right for TED, because I didn't know, because I'm not a qualified TEDx, you know, speaker coach, um, but I've been coaching and speaking, you know, for the last eight years, and I know I know when I see a great story mm. and I know when I, and I see a great performance, if you like. Um, and I'm, I'm so super thrilled, especially with you, Martin, because, you know, you were so like educated and, 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 and informative. And yet I didn't know what you were talking about. And then to see you in that arena coming to life, being you, because I've got to know you over the, over the last few years. And I was like, you know, you're not just corporate at all. Um, and it was really great to see you in that environment. And like you said, you know, when your parents are there and your wife and your partner, and you know, it's just kind of like, I just, I just realized I gave you a wife and a partner then. <laughs> when your wife or your partner is there, and or your partner is there. You know, it's great to see the people, like you said, that have been on the journey with you. And I want to thank mm -hmm. you for being on the journey with me. And it's been a pleasure to, to be able to give you that platform so people can see who you are. And um, I just want, you know, go ahead and go and look at, at, uh, at Martin's TED Talk, but appreciate that he, he's probably not quite the man that you see in front of him because there's a lot less of him now. <laughs> but he's more healthier. So in, in, in finishing, Martin, you know, finally, what would you say to somebody who was looking to share the message, you know, or they have an idea that they want to get out there? What would you say to them? I, I definitely think it, TED's is a great platform to be able to do that, but don't limit yourself just to doing TED. There's so many other places you could utilise these skills, whether that's in your local community, whether that's in your organisation, whether that's you're going to take to a world platform or some other way. So there is so many different ways of being able to do that and get some professional help at the end of the day. Um, I've, I'm very lucky, uh, very, very lucky. I'm a, also a professional speaking coach. I have with Cheryl, we've done so many people over the years, but even I can't do it without having the help and assistance because it's, it's a bit like when you write, write your own document or write a book, you soon become very word blind because you've read your own notes, you've done your own things so many times that actually 
you think it's okay. And it's not until you get somebody else to reread your work that suddenly they realize actually you've spelled it's the wrong way around or you've missed half the words out because it sounds okay in your head, uh, but it doesn't actually look okay on paper. Uh, and when you do something like a TED Talk, having someone like you in, in your corner, Cheryl, to be able to help you, be able to structure that, be able to find the nuggets that are the good bits and get rid of all the dross, the things that you're carrying around because it's important to you but it's not important to the message that I actually need to get across. It's so invaluable, uh, e even as an experienced speaker, even as an experienced speaker coach, even as somebody who scripted these things and helped these things with so many other people um, and delivered these things on so many different stages. Uh, having somebody there that actually just goes through it and says, actually, this bit works, this bit doesn't work, means that you go from something like you've said is, okay, to something that actually is wow. And, and the crowd know it. That's the difference. Everyone in that audience feel it, they know it, and they go away transformed. Yeah, cool. My analogy is, you know, you can be the best appendix remover, but you try and take your own out, and it's a bit messy and quite painful. Um, so, yeah, you always need somebody else to have another look at it. Martin, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your energy and your continued support and just for being freaking awesome. Uh, so... Uh, we will finish now so please hop over go and have a look at uh, martin's tedx talk please put your thumbs up and give him some comments that would be fabulous thank you very much take care Bye.